What's going on everyone? So I asked you guys what video topics you want me to cover in these next couple days and the one that got the most votes was to do a gist of tips for winter inshore species. So I'm going to tell you guys what you should be throwing, where you guys should be, and how to catch snook, redfish, and speckled trout in the winter. Obviously with the colder temperatures, fish are gonna act different. In the summer, snook will be off the beach or pushed up on the mangroves and you'll find them on the oyster bars and everything, but when the water temperature drops, snook really do not like colder water. So you'll mostly find them in warmer water areas, which are these darker water areas. So you'll see them in residential canals, underneath docks and stuff like that. And in these uh, creek systems, in these estuaries, because the water is warmer there, because they're usually the dark bottom. The sun will hit that bottom and warm up the water much quicker and it's usually shallower in there. If you're going for snook in the winter, you wanna look for creeks, you wanna look for residential areas, and these fish are probably gonna be a little more lethargic than they are in the summer, so using some slower tactics, like slow rolling some jigs, like right here, we got a little DOA cow on a 1 8 ounce jig head, especially in the root beer color. This is a killer in the winter, especially for these snooks in the creek. A little bit darker water, you wanna go a little bit darker bait. Just slow roll this off the bottom and give it a bounce every once in a while and you'll get a lot of snook doing that. You could also use, live bait's a big one if you're fishing the docks. If you're just trying to catch snook, maybe not the biggest ones in the world, try using live shrimp. Just cast them under the dock to get those between like 15 to like low 20 inch snook. I mean, you might get some bigger ones, but that's typically the size you would get. If you want to get the bigger ones, you want to use big uh, greenbacks, white bait, or anything like that. Or you could get some finger mullet, maybe like between like three and five inches. Cast it under these docks, and the bigger snook will usually go after those. And same within the creeks. I would recommend using mullet in the creeks because that's typically what's there. Um, as far as redfish, they, from what I've learned, they don't really move too much from the summer as opposed to the winter. It's just, that, again, they're usually more lethargic, but you'll find them, I find them actually find more of them on structure, kind of like the docks and everything with the snook. So in the winter, if you want to just go out and have a good time, target some docks and residential canals with some live shrimp. You'll catch plenty of fish. You'll catch redfish, uh, snook, you'll get a sheep's head, black drum. They all stack up in there. Uh, slow rolling jigs like the DOA cow, like I was talking about, around some oyster bars and mangrove cuts. You can use the cut bait that you've seen me do a lot these past couple months up by the mangroves, and you could probably do that under docks. I really haven't done that much. And then as far as speckled trout, that's probably what's best known around here in Tampa Bay in the winter is our speckled trout fishing. We get some of these gator sized trout, the mid to high 20 inch. I've even heard of people getting 30 inch trout out here. And the best way to go after them, or my favorite way to go after them is using top water lures. You use a Zara Spook or maybe like a mirror, mirror lure, a sheep pup or anything like that. Cast it up by these uh, grass flats and oyster bars and you'll get some of these bigger trout. You may not catch a ton of them, but you get the bigger ones. If you're just going out trying to catch a lot of fish, again, DOA cows are a great option. Uh, Mirror lure, are another good one. Uh, live bait, you could use the shrimp, like we were talking about. You got the greenbacks, there's a ton of greenbacks. That's another thing about winter. Right now in the grass flats, there's a bunch of bait around. It's pretty easy to find. You can live chum, you can do whatever you want. I haven't even had the live chum lately. You literally just go out, you find the bait, and you just throw the net. Obviously, pretty much all the species will eat that, but yeah, trout, oyster bars, grass flats, that's mostly where you'll find them. Top water is my favorite. Uh, you could use slower baits like a mirrodine, slow twitch it, uh, slow roll some of those baits or jigs or anything like that, or live bait with shrimp and everything. And then for redfish, docks, oyster bars, stuff like that, live bait, shrimp, uh, greenbacks, or you can use cut bait as well, that works really well. For snook, you would need to go in the creeks, you need to go in the residential areas, and you'll find a ton of fish doing that. I recommend using live bait, and that's the simplest way to catch a lot of fish. So as the water temperature drops, because the air temperature is dropping obviously, the water tends to be a lot clearer. 
and that usually means that the fish are going to be a lot more finicky and they're going to be going to different places and one thing that you can do to try and go against that is to use lighter leader and longer sections of leader so you'll see me in the winter using 20 25 pound leader but i'm using like at least three foot section of that because in the summer you can get away with it the dirtier water you can get away with like a foot leader but these fish especially in the colder temperatures are a lot more finicky and they'll see your line and they'll spook so i recommend even if you're going after bigger snook try and go no less or no more than 30 pound leader and if you're just fishing like uh oyster bar or anything where it's not like a dock or mangroves or anything you can honestly i'll just use about 20 pound leader at the most just just to be safe just to get those bites so let's talk about what setups i recommend using so you see in my videos a lot of time i'm using this 4000 setup right here this is a pen battle 4000 this has to be my favorite reel right now and really you could catch any one of these three species on this it might be a little overkill for the trout but sometimes you need a 4000 for those redfish and snook especially if you're fishing the structure because of the drag and everything but on here 20 pound braid it's really a good setup for anything on a nice medium power rod this is 76 st croix mojo in shore i have this rig right now for some live bait fishing i was doing recently this is if you're using live bait in the winter like i said the water is usually a lot clearer and the fish are a lot more finicky so you want to use the smallest hook you can get away with i don't know if you can see that right there but that's a 1-0 circle hook right there and i would recommend using nothing bigger than a 2-0 for if you're using like big finger mullet or big mullet like that then you could get away with using a 2-0 but shrimp and greenbacks i recommend using a 1-0 right there right here i got 25 pound leader right here is about two foot section of it so really should cut it off it's really frayed from i was catching some snook in the creek and really should retie and everything but that's a good setup right there uh for trout if you're going for top water or any anything really for trout you don't really need a 4000 i'd recommend getting like a 2500 or something like that that makes it a little more fun and depending where you're catching the the redfish and snook, if you're catching them in a place with not a lot of structure, you can get away with a 2500, but if you're just looking for an all around like good size just to catch fish, you cannot go wrong with a 4000 size reel right here. And this is my favorite setup just to catch pretty much anything all year round. So a big thing that you really need to pay attention to in the winter is tides. So when you're going, if you want to go for these snook in the creeks or anything like that, especially if you're in a boat or anything, you need a higher tide to get back in these areas. Um, if you're fishing from land, it's not as big of a deal as long as there's enough water in there for the fish But if you're trying to plan a day where you're going out trying to catch an inshore slam I'd, You really need to kind of plan it around the tides So I recommend on the lower tides Is when you're going after the trout on the grass flats and everything like that Find some oyster bars find some grass flats that still have enough water to hold some fish and cast your top waters around there and catch a couple trout doing that on the lower part of the tide and as the tide's starting to come up you can fish these oyster bars that are now starting to get a little more submerged fish those for some redfish using some live bait or anything like that or maybe as the water is starting to creep up to the mangroves start fishing the mangroves for some uh, redfish doing that and as the tide's getting a little bit higher in the column that's when you go into the creeks and you start fishing the docks and everything like that for the snook so, I mean, obviously you could catch redfish in the same areas that you're catching the snook. The redfish are kind of everywhere right now. But if you really, I've been going out trying to get slams the past couple days and it seems like trout on low tide and as the tide's starting to come up, that's when you follow the redfish and the snook into these creeks and dock areas and start fishing those. And it, obviously if the tide's going the opposite, hit the redfish and snook as early as you can on the higher tide and as it starts going out, that's when you hit the, the trout on the lower part of the tide. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions or anything that I didn't really cover that you want to know more about, please leave it in a comment down below and I'll try to respond to everyone because I really just want you guys to go out and try and catch more fish. That's the whole purpose of these videos and everything. I want to help you guys out. So yeah, any questions or anything down below, I'll try to answer them. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That would really mean a lot to me. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.